This year has not been easy for many people. Even finding a place to walk has not been easy. Never mind explore new places or visit heritage sites. But on the other hand, it's given us the opportunity to spend more time in local places. Places we don't usually associate with the word heritage. But that's what this project is about. My place in time, about exploring our local heritage. Even everyday places have history if we know how to look. Well, I'm looking and what can I see around me? I can see roads, open space, I can see a race course, I can see a fun fair, I can see a block of flats that was once an old factory. These are our everyday places. And where am I? I'm on Micklegate Stray on the outskirts of York, not the historic centre of York that people come from all over the world to see. We're out in the suburbs. And why here? Because this is my place in time. My Place in Time is an exciting new project to show members of the Young Archaeologists Club how they can unearth the past without having to dig. We won't be needing that then. What we'll show them is that all they need is an inquisitive mind, a lot of curiosity and learn a bit of detective work. With the help of the Young Archaeologists Club leaders and some digital training aids and activities, young people will be shown how to seek out information about the heritage of any place they choose, using a bit of legwork and some easily accessible online resources, including old maps, aerial photography, LIDAR and archaeological databases. We're hoping this project will help young people learn to care and value their local places in the future. And how can we do that? By helping young people to understand that clues to the past can be anywhere, even something like this cast iron water trough, and that by searching for clues, they can learn to become landscape detectives. I like to start an investigation by looking at the lie of the land. You can see out here, it's flat, big high ridge on this side, high ridge on the other side. In the prehistoric period, this would have been really boggy. Actually, there's another clue there because this part of the Micklegate Stray is called the Knaves Mire and the Mire is a bog. Anyway, the prehistoric people like to keep their feet dry and they moved along high ridges like this one up here. In fact, some 4,000 year old axe heads were found just up there. The Romans too weren't daft, they wanted to keep their feet dry too. So when they came along and established their legionary base in what is now modern York. They put their road on the same bridge going all the way into York. And this was one of the most important highways in Roman Britain. Sometimes knowing the precise line of a Roman road is a matter of joining up dots between places where it has been positively identified. The maps you can get online tell us that the, the Roman road actually came through this strip somewhere here, probably along this strip of grass under here. Again, the records tell us that up that road up there was another Roman settlement. It's like a hamlet, a, a big farmstead, and it had cemeteries and blacksmiths and so on. And you can just imagine all the traders and travellers going along this road in this strip along here I wonder if it was as difficult to cross a Roman road as it is the modern road today. The old maps tell us that this path was once a medieval lane and along it is a stone called Hobbs Stone. I'm sure it's going to be this stone here but from this direction it looks a little bit like a gate post. That's a, a bit disappointing really. Anyway, let's have a look at it and see what it is. <laughs> oh, I see why it's marked on the map. Wow, look at that. Shape of a head, it's very weathered. You can see a body as a shield. This is the outline of a medieval knight. Ah, it's a medieval coffin lid, actually. It's the sort of thing you see in, 
in cathedrals and minsters and churchyards and that's definitely medieval. I can see why that's on the map. But this stone it's very different. This isn't shown on the map. And this, I know, has got an interesting story of its own to tell. In 1604, the bubonic plague hit York. And many of the victims and the people who were showing symptoms were taken out into a quarantine zone on Micklegate Stray, on this part here called Hobmore. And they lived in wooden lodges called plague lodges. They were quarantined and when they wanted to get food they would come up to this point here and they would place money in the trough there which had vinegary to act as a disinfectant just like we have with with sanitizer today it's very very poignant at this point in time given the the pandemic situation i i sort of feel i feel i ought to leave something like a i don't know some of these biscuits i was going to eat earlier there anyway as it's a quarantine zone I'm not going any further that way, I'm off back. If I'd crossed over this road in 1604, retreating from the, the plague on the other side of the road, I would have encountered over here something equally sinister. This was a site of Tyburn, the gallows where people were brought out to, to be hung and large crowds gathered to, to watch the spectacle. Tip for landscape detectives, if there's a signboard, read it. This gallows was called the three-legged mare. But our detective work so far has showed us that even an everyday place like a pedestrian crossing is not just a place to cross the road, it's a place where your imagination can cross into the past. And there are some clues we've got to look for that are not on maps or signboards. These are clues on the ground. We have to look at the ground. And where I'm walking now, there are rises and falls in the ground. There's a hollow, going over a ridge. Another hollow, going over a ridge. This is the remains of medieval ploughing, which has survived for hundreds of years. These are medieval strip fields. Sometimes they're very difficult to see, especially when the grass is high and it's full of buttercups like it is today. And we'll see them much better using something called LiDAR. This project will show how LiDAR can be used to create and view 3D computer models of things on the ground from information collected by laser scanners in aircraft. Learning to use LiDAR, as well as interactive aerial photography from websites such as Google Earth, Young people can explore places and look for clues without leaving the house. It's like having your own drone that you can fly anywhere. Being a landscape detective isn't just about finding clues, it's taking time to sit and think about what they're telling you. Here, it seems that from prehistoric times onwards, living and travelling up on the ridge was always going to be a better option than being down in a bog. The Roman settlement up there later evolved into a medieval village known as Dringhouses, now part of York suburbs. And old maps show its property plots and strip fields laid out either side of the slopes along the ridge. However, the large areas of boggy ground here were still useful. During medieval times, these were legally defined as large open spaces known as strays, where cattle and horses could freely graze. And today, these open spaces provide areas for recreation. Oh, and that abandoned cast iron water trough we saw may be one of the last physical remnants of that tradition, that of providing water for the stray animals. Exploring local places, by using lots of resources, can give young people an opportunity to create their own archaeological storybook, but one that they can walk through, and they won't need a trowel to turn the pages. Anyway, a busy detective can't leave any stone unturned in the search for the past. There must be other ones around here somewhere. Well, I'm back where I started 
it's been a, a quick journey through this place in time but there's lots of times we haven't had the opportunity to talk about for instance we've got 18th century Georgian racing time there's a 18th century grandstand buried in the modern grandstands over there during World War I there was an airfield here we have war time and that factory over there that's now a block of flats was the the factory where the famous Terry's chocolate orange were made this is my favorite time chocolate time we've had a journey here which has taken us through 4,000 years of history. This has been my place in time. Let's help young people find theirs. Good stuff, this.